Okay, what we've got now is I've got two pieces of uh, 50,000 stock. It's actually the same diameter as our frame rails were. And uh, again, they're very clean so that they will, the solder will stick to them. I bent a 90 degree angle into them. But the bottom of the 90 is about, I'd say about 3 eighths of an inch long. And what we're going to do is, that's going to lay inside here on the inside. Yep, do that. Set that down in there. There we go. That's going to lay basically on top and inside our frame rails. And they're going to come up vertically and meet our axle tube. So, and this is again kind of a job that's a little awkward, but what we're going to do, I'm basically going to take my soldering iron. I'm going to go ahead and preheat a glob of solder on it. Again, that's silver solder. So we got a little bit of a glob there. All right, let's stick that back in its holder so that's ready to go. All right, we're going to take our piece of aluminum, or I'm sorry, not aluminum, piece of steel wire here. This is falling down behind the car. There we go. All right, we're going to lay that into this junction between the plate and the side rail, hold it in place in the back, and make sure that it is vertical the chassis. So we're going to eyeball it. Again, don't worry about that length there. We're going to cut that off. I'm going to take my soldering flux. I'm just going to put a little dab here in the corner where the axle tube meets that piece of wire. Now I'm going to take my iron, and I've knocked the glob off the end, so we're going to little melt a little more onto it there. There we go. I'm just going to bring this in here and tack this into place. There we go. All right. That'll now stay in place. Okay. It's vertical. It's against the axle, and it's laying in the joint that's created by our brass plate and that side rail. Now I'm going to take some flux, not that much, and we're going to smear that all over here. Now you saw that was movement. The movement is not that the rod is moving, but it's a little bit of rotational movement we're getting in our axle tube. But I'm going to smear some silver solder in here. Now we're going to take our silver solder with our soldering iron. And we're now going to solder that piece of wire to our chassis. So get a little ball on here for heat transfer. Put that down into this joint. Heat it up. Let it get warm. And basically then feed in the solder and complete the joint. Come on. You're heating up a lot of material again, so give it time to get hot. And go ahead and get yourself a nice clean solder joint a nice good fillet on it. And I need to feed in a little more material there. There we go. Rotate it around. And I'm going to just spin it around and make sure we've got a good fillet down this side of the two pieces of wire where they meet. All right, so we've got a nice fillet on both sides of that piece of wire. Now I'm going to take some more of my flux, a little dab on either side, again, of the wire where it meets the axle tube. And uh, that's an eighth inch diameter 
copper tube, in case I didn't say that earlier. It has a 3 32nd inch ID, which is basically your typical 1 32nd scale axle diameter. And we are now going to go ahead and solder this to our axle tube. Flow into both sides. Up around the top isn't bad. Let's rotate it on us. I'm going to rotate it back. There we go. Alright, so we've got that wire soldered to the chassis and soldered to the axle too. We're going to do the same thing with the other piece of wire. We're going to go ahead and stop the video for a second while we do that. And when that's in place, we'll come back and go to our next step. Okay, we've got our two wires which are supporting the axle from the front. The other thing we want to do though is support the axle from behind. So what I've done is, and I've prefabricated this part to this point, this is a piece of quarter inch wide, 025 or 25 thousandths of an inch thick brass material. I have bent a 90 degree foot on it, that foot's about a quarter of an inch long and I have polished the sides that are going to be where the solder is going to be with my Dremel sanding tool so that again we're sure that material is nice and clean and what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing and I'm going to find a screwdriver to hold it something to hold it in place there we go and what we're going to do is solder this in basically right there so, I'm going to take a little flux, put it down here where the foot of that piece is going to meet our brass chassis plate. Put a little bit on the bottom of that foot as well, like so. And I'm going to dab some of that flux right here on the tangent of our axle tube right on the center there. Okay, I'm going to set this into place for a moment. The flux is kind of nice because it kind of helps tack material in place. You can put it there and uh, not have to hold it. I'll take my soldering iron and I'm going to heat up a little glob here. Alright, what I'm going to do is hold the plate in place with my screwdriver and I'm just going to tack it in place by putting a drop of solder here on the side where the plate meets the axle to yeah, a little bit more basically all I'm trying to do right now is just tack it in place so it won't move on me looks pretty good. We'll give it a, a cool for a second. Yep, that's pretty down in place. Okay, now we're going to actually solder that foot to the plate. Clean my tip. Now a little ball on the end for heat transfer. And we're just going to put that into here. Basically what I'm going to try and do a little more glob on there. Let's heat up the whole plate and get it to where I can just flow this solder in all the way around it once the plate's nice and hot. And uh, again, you're heating up a lot of material. Give it time to get hot. That's what I need to do here. Once it's hot to the right temperature, you basically, just as you saw when we soldered the collet, you should be able to flow the solder all the way around even if the iron is really not even at that spot. Let's see here, try and get a little bit hotter. Get to where it's going to flow for us. Kind of draw that solder in underneath it. Here at this side here. Sure, she's nice and hot. There we 
we go yeah I can I can now see the solder is liquid basically all the way around it so flow some in there make sure it floats underneath it lift it away and let that cool for a moment and then once that cools we're going to put a dab of flux here on the front and solder where that plate meets the axle tube. So go ahead and dab some flux in there. It's still kind of hot so it's melting the flux. That's all right. Okay. Let's pull off a bit of solder here to work with. And now we're going to solder the plate to the back side of the axle. Get it good and warm because basically you're going to want that to flow underneath there because a lot of this is going to be cut away when we cut that to length. So I'm going to reach in underneath here, flow some solder in the bottom here too to get a fillet on the bottom side of the plate where the plate meets the axle. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so the plate has now been soldered to the main chassis plate. And we've now soldered that top and bottom of the front axle. Basically that's it for the front end. The front end is now finished. Okay, the next thing we're going to do here is get our bushings to where they're basically touching our axle rails. Right there. Make sure everything's down, square. A little bit of flux on it each one. And what we're going to do is tack this into place. Mostly what we want to do is uh, do that so it'll help hold and locate our axle rails for what's going to be our next step. Alright, just checking it. Sure, we've got a nice little fillet tying the bushing to the frame rail. There we go. That looks good. I'm just going to reach in here with my pencil, give the bushings a little push, make sure they don't move. As you can see, when I push on that bushing, a little movement in the wire here, so got to tie it in real well. Okay. At this point, I'm going to need to get this out of my way. So I'm going to loosen this up. Take off the thumb screw. Remove the clamp. Loosen this up. Pull out the threaded post. I'm going to leave that inside there right now. Alright, our next step is basically we're going to have to fabricate a motor mount that our FF050 motor will screw to. Okay, so spin this around. So what we have here is our motor plate, our motor. And basically, I'm going to make it so that our holes line up and the bushing fits inside here. Now this hole in the center for the pinion bushing is just under a quarter inch. It's uh, so you can go to a quarter inch if you've got that. If not, I had dug out the drill bit I'm using. And, uh, 15 Yeah, it's, uh, thanks Nick. It is 15 64ths of an inch is what we actually use there. Now what we do to duplicate this is take the piece, kind of line it up here, like so. Get it into the corner. We're going to take our vice grips and we are going to clamp the two pieces together like so. Alright, 
Now what I'm going to do is take my nippers and cut the outside dimension to match. Work it from this direction. So we're just going to work our way up here with our nibbler. Yep, maybe. And let's work it from this direction then. There we go. And cut it to the proper width. Alright, so we've got our width cut right. I'm just double checking, make sure it didn't shift any. Did a little bit, so I'm going to just pop this vice grip open for a second. Make sure everything's lined up nicely here. Across the bottom. Don't worry about the top so much. We're going to be cutting that away here in just a moment. So, there we go. Come back in here. A little bit of a squeeze, clamp the two together, that looks good. We're going to take our nibbler now and we are going to cut across the top and get it to the proper height. There we are. So our overall dimensions are roughly where we need to be. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the dice to the to the drill press here, and we are basically going to drill out our four holes. So I'm going to dig through my drill set, find out what size hole this is. I will tell you what I use here in just a moment. And we're going to drill the four mother mount holes. Okay. What we found is we need a number 44 drill bit about 86 thousandths or 086. Um, what we're going to do is use the jig to locate where we're going to drill those four holes. So we'll turn the press on and we're just going to bring that down here. Let the jig force the drill bit to the center. Let them go all the way up to the shank and we're going to drill our four holes. Two that are back by the edge, close to your vice grip jaws, and you can kind of work them in there, but kind of support it. to do is take a marker and I'm going to draw a ring around the inside of our pinion bushing hole. Now the nice thing about this good fat marker is and this unfortunately is an operation you got to eyeball so draw it around there. As you can see I've got a small little bit of brass showing in the center. I'm now going to pop this open, free this up, and what I'm going to do right now, here real quick, and we'll do it here since we've got the camera on it, got a little punch I've got here with a center point on it, a hole, slide this over here so I'm clear of the drill press, I'll locate that right in the center, that little bullseye that was left when we drew in the uh, the center. Give it a nice firm whack. Now we're going to go back and drill out the center of this. And I'm going to do that with a slightly smaller bit so we'll get that checked up and come right back. Go. Alright, I just picked a relatively small drill bit. Doesn't really matter the size. What I'm going to do is just use that to generate a generate a pilot hole 
which we will use then once we open this up. So let's go ahead, we're going to drill that center point open. figured it would do that but that's all right we've got our hole all right and we are now going to open this up to uh, 1564 so it's actually a fairly large step so I'm probably going to drill one more open this pilot hole up a little bit more before I drill my final diameter hole okay we've basically used a couple of drills and have opened up our center hole on our motor mount. We're now about to drill the final diameter which is 1564s. we go we've got our motor mount now we're going to need to go back with our sanding wheel and clean off the drill burrs and smooth up the edges a little bit but essentially it is good and right now as we've discussed earlier our next step now is to take a cutoff wheel we're basically going to cut some clearance notches in the bottom corners bottom corners of our motor mount plate so that that plate will nestle down in between the two chassis rails and sit flat on the surface of the chassis jig. So we're going to do that real quick and we'll be right back. Alright, I've got a what is essentially a tired old scrap motor and I'm going to use that to construct this so I'm now going to use that motor and we're going to screw the motor mount to this scrap motor lined up here put our two screws in make sure they're nice and tight there we go alright so our motor is going to sit in here like that and uh, we need to solder it in place. Now, these two little points of contact we have found are not enough since the motor is about the heaviest item in the car. If you have a hard enough crash, it can pull loose and break at either one of these joints. So what we're doing now in our chassis is, and I'm going to remove these two pins that are in my way now, pull them up and out and I'm actually going to transfer them to the outside holes here and you'll note that I'm not pushing it in with my pliers I'm going to do that with my fingers never force them in with a pair of pliers you may not get them back out okay so we've moved those there we've got the room in between the rails what I'm going to do now is take a piece of uh, quarter inch wide brass, uh, 32 thousandths of an inch thick, and we're going to use that to make a piece that's going to bridge across the rails. So let me get that fabricated real quick and we'll be right back. All right, I thought I'd show you this step real quick. What I've done is just lifted the chassis up a little bit off of the chassis jig so I can slide this piece of quarter inch brass underneath the chassis. What I've done is, is I've butted it up against this rail here and I bolted it so that it's square. Now I'm going to just take my X-Acto knife, scratch a line in it, so that I know where to cut that to length with my nibblers. This is the Wainert Mamoose 
method of construction without measurement. Basically, he doesn't like to measure stuff, and uh, I gotta say, it's a pretty nice way to work. You don't have to keep measuring stuff, you just keep using the components as you're building it as a jig to help you fabricate the next piece that goes on it. So, we're going to take our nibblers here, we're going to cut it to length. Get in there. There we go. A little bit of a purse sticking out there, so I'm going to come in here. Not with that tool, that was a cutoff wheel. This one, which is my sanding wheel. Knock that burr off the end. Alright, now I'm going to make sure it uh, fits nicely down inside here. Perfect. It's sitting right down on the block, but there's no movement, perceptible movement side to side. So, it fits in there good. Alright. We're now going to take our sander again and we're going to clean up the edges where it's going to come in contact with the chassis rails. And again, since we said we're going to solder this to our motor mount, I'm also going to sand one of the long, one of the long edges. that's nice and clean so we're going to drop that down in here set our motor on push it back okay now basically what we're trying to do is decide where we're going to put the motor now the motor shaft on this motor has been cut to what's your normal length so I'm just going to bring a slotted gear into here and just kind of eyeball it. Most of you guys, if you're to the point where you're scratch building chassis, you've got a pretty good idea of where pinions end up when you uh, press them on the end of your motor shaft. So, I'm just going to hold our gear here and we're going to push our motor to where I will have basically the motor mount where I want it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is this real quick. I'm going to take away the motor, being sure not to disturb the placement of this plate. And now I'm going to take a little bit of solder, I'm sorry, flux, dab that on here, Watch your plate, make sure you don't move it. All right, and back to our iron. We're gonna go ahead and put a blob of solder on here. What we're gonna do, and I'm gonna hold this in place with my X-Acto knife. careful not to disturb its placement. I'm just going to take that little ball of solder, put that in here, and just tack it in place. Alright, good. Now what we've got is, this is solidly mounted, it's not going to move around on us anymore. Alright, so now we're ready to do some soldering here. It's a little awkward, it's kind of tough, some of it you're not going to be able to solder all the way across the joint. That's all right. Yeah, you can't get the iron into every little hole on this thing. Put some flux here. Finish putting a little flux on this rail over here too where we tacked it down. And I'm even going to put a little bit uh, here on the edge of the plate that contacts our motor mount. Set my motor into place. And I'm going to do this. 
going to get another little ball of solder on the end of this thing here. And what I want to do is basically where the motor mount meets the rail, I want to tack that in with a ball of solder. Eyeball your motor. Make sure it's nice and straight with the frame rails. That looks good. And we're going to try and tack this into place. side is done. Alright, so now we're going to go back now and basically finish solder this side. Again, it's an awkward place to work. Solder that into there. Like so. Do the same on this side over here. There we go. Okay, we've got both sides of our quarter inch plate soldered to the rails. Now we're going to go in here. Ah, didn't have it tacked in well enough. We're going to go in here though and solder the motor mount to that quarter inch plate. It's a tough place to work, but you'll be able to get it. Again, you're not going to be able to solder all the way over to the one side. It's basically the motor mount screw is down close enough that you can't really you know, get underneath there. You just can't get any solder in there because you can't get your iron into that corner. drop of solder now just between the corner of the motor mount and the chassis rail here we go just got a little fillet where the edge of the motor mount meets the chassis rail dab a flux on here. You can see why we're using an old motor. Basically because the flux, as I said earlier, is caustic and will cause metal to rust over time. So uh, you don't want to try and get that on your motor because you won't be able to wash it off. Okay, we've got the motor soldered into place. It's a little warm. Careful there. It's nice and square with our chassis rails. All right. And again, the plate does a couple of things. Provides more surface area for our motor mount across the bottom so that it won't break free. The other thing is, is if in your tuning you find that you're a little light in back and you need to add some weight, it provides you a surface to put sheet, uh, sheet lead. You can stick it on there and, and weight the back of the car. These chassis end up being pretty light, so if you've got to do some tuning like that, you shouldn't have to add too much lead. So uh, that works out as a perfect platform for that. All right, we've got one more piece to put in. And what that piece is going to do is tie in our bushing to the top of our motor mount and back to the other bushing. All right, so I'm going to take a piece of 032 wire 
Dig that out here real quick, get it cleaned up, and we'll be right back. All right, I've already put wind bend in this piece of wire, and again, it's been cleaned. I've hit it with some sandpaper, get it nice and clean so it will take the solder well. What I'm going to do is it's going to lay on top of the motor mount and then tie in to the bushing and this chassis rail on that side. And bend is pretty close. I'm going to bend it a little bit tighter. Some of you are noticing this bending tool. It's part of a set I bought from, uh, I think the outfit is called Micromart. And, uh, you seem to sell modeling tools like that. Came in a set with a bunch of different kinds of uh, bending tools. This one, though, seems to be the one I use the most. It's a nice tool to kind of get a bend in things. So, all right, so we've got this here. That looks good. I'm straight across the motor mount. My bend is right at the edge of the motor mount. Comes up and meets my bushing and my chassis rail. Now what I'm going to do is take my marker and put a little mark here in this corner. There we go. That's going to tell me where I'm going to make my other bend to form the other side that's going to come over and tie into the opposite chassis rail. So we're going to pause the tape, get that bend done, and we'll be back. Okay, we've got our piece of wire bent. Um, sometimes the pieces don't end up on the same plane, no big deal. Just tweak it so you've got them where they're, uh, they're lined up with each other. We're going to set this in here. And basically what we're doing is we're going to tie the top of the motor mount into the chassis rails and our bushings. So what I'm going to do is this right now. I'm going to hold that in place, put a little bit of flux out here, in the corners where they meet. And get some solder on here. What I'm trying to do, or what I want to do right now for the moment, is tack it to the two chassis rails. So, drop a solder on there, bring it in, there we go. Yep. Not quite down on the bushing, so I'm going to just heat it up again, push the piece down, there we go. Alright, so now it's resting on top of our spherical bushing, and it's up against our chassis rail, and it's in place our piece of wire is laying nice and flat across the top of our motor mount and over here we have to just push it down a little bit but uh, we're going to tack it in place to where it's in contact with the chassis rail and the bushing as well so flux there we got the soldering iron a solder on there like so. Gonna hold it down on the motor. Push this down so that it's on the bushing. And tack that into place. Alright, there we go. So, now we're ready to go ahead and just solder it across the top of the motor. Again, you're seeing why we use a scrap motor if you can. I'm going to put some flux in here. Now, the tricky part is, you of course got your motor mounts there as well, your screws. So, you can't flow too much solder in on the edges, but you can do real well down the middle. I'm going to stand it up like that so that the solder flows down into the joint. And we're going to bring this in here. And solder it together some heat into it. Turn it around, move it to where you can work it. I 
Alright, there we go. That is nicely soldered to the top of the motor, so that's going to support the motor at the top point. Okay, now we're going to take our flux and ah, dab a bunch of it into here on the bushing. Do both sides while we've got the flux in hand. So, too much doesn't hurt. Alright, you want to try and solder this bushing every place where it makes contact with a piece of wire. And if you've even got an open point, and we will with the little triangle in here, that's the triangle created by the bushing, our top motor mount or motor box rail, and the upright off of our chassis rail, we're going to fill that triangle in with solder too. We want this bushing soldered in as best as we can all the way around, because otherwise it could pull loose in a crash. So, we're going to get things nice and warm here, and we're going to flow in a nice amount of solder. Once you get it hot, again, you should be able to basically even work it. With the iron on one side, you can even feed the solder in from the other side. Alright, see what we got here. Ah, oh, that looks real good. Okay. We basically, we've got solder around all oh, about 190, 200 degrees of that bushing. I want to get a little bit more in this part of it right. We're going to tip that up. Try and get a little bit more of a fillet right here for this upper motor box meets our bushing. Yeah. Alright, that looks good. And we're going to go ahead and do the same to the other side. And we'll be right back. Alright, 